shortest intro we've had <laughs> welcome everybody this is battle rankings live i'm your friendly bb host <laughs> joe loose i am here with my lovely and talented producer and say hi ann hi ann yep we are here on this cold cold day uh really just cold. Huh? Really cold. Yeah, it is really cold. Uh, yeah, so um, what, why don't you tell us a little bit about the music you chose? <laughs> uh, it was the uh, opening theme music to the Roadrunner show, mm -hmm. which ran from 1966 until 68. And then uh, it, at 68, it would change to the Bugs Bunny and Roadrunner show, which is kind of, I think, when I remember it. And whenever they switched to the Roadrunner cartoons, they played this theme song first. Okay. So and so I remembered it. When you said you were talking about making mistakes, I thought of the Roadrunner because, uh, you know, Chuck Jones had a quote about him. He said, gosh, what was the exact? Like, I, I think I have it here. Hold on a second. I'll find the exact quote because it's really funny. About the coyote? Yeah, about the coyote. Wildy coyote. coyote. Super, Super genius. genius. Okay. Yeah, it's Wiley Coyote. He said, no outside, this is what Chuck Jones said, no outside force can harm the coyote. Only his ineptitude or failure of the Acme products. Well, I, you know what? I, <laughs> I think one of the things, a shortcoming of the coyote was, yeah. he didn't learn from his mistakes. No, he didn't learn from his mistakes. That was a problem. Oh, you really? So, that's that's the tie-in. That's the tie-in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's the bridge, folks. <laughs> so I did not learn from his mistakes. So what we're doing is uh, flames of <laughs> war. Don't be the coyote. Yeah, don't be coyote. <laughs> Uh, super genius. genius. Anyway, flames of war and team Yankee common mistakes. Oh, and hello asterisk and how to avoid them. Uh, once again, I. Uh, I am I am the SME. Uh, it's just just me and and Anne here. Uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna get right into it. Uh, I I picked this one for the simple fact of uh, well I, I I played a lot of tournament games, uh, countless uh, for I don't know eight years or something like that. I've played a lot of tournament games, and in those I've seen. Um, and made note of, of common mistakes uh, or, or, or pitfalls that people ran into. And the things, these are easily avoidable. Uh, so we're, we're going to go through these. Now, hopefully, um, if, you pick up, if you pick up like even 20% of all this and apply it to your game, I think you'll have a much better uh, butter game. And, and the other thing, too, is maybe... Uh, you might have a more enjoyable game uh, because um, you, you know you're not blindsided by something or 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 just making um, uh, just making mistakes. You know something that could be avoidable or 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 feel like you just got slapped inside the head because you know you 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 didn't know about something. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna try to avoid avoid that stuff. So let's go over here. Yep. Ah, but before we do that, uh, there's a sec. I, I, I can't believe I've got. I am going to do a section in here about upcoming tournament schedule. 
uh, you know, hey, where are battle rankings? I'm surprised I haven't done this uh, before. And uh, so these are tournaments that I know of uh, that are coming up. So um, we got a matter of fact uh, this weekend uh, in uh, Bloomington, uh, Minnesota. Uh, the guys over uh, up there, um, they're uh, they're having a uh, late war, 105, 105 points. Um, and then, uh, then in Rochester, Minnesota on the 20th, they're doing team Yankee 105. Uh, and then, and then on the 27th game time, uh, adventures in game table, game table. Thank you. Uh, in Newark, Ohio, not New York, New Jersey, boy, that's a big difference. Um, <laughs> major, um, the, uh, Oh yeah, Screaming Eagles. They're uh, up there in uh, Minnesota. Minnesota. Um, you know, oh, yeah, he's playing the interview. Anyway, um, that's my Fargo uh, thing. But uh, yeah, heart, um, game time, uh, game table adventures. Because um, oh, we have game time here. That's why it's getting Family, mixed up. Game time, yeah. Family game time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, those guys in Ohio. Um, they're doing uh, late war 105 three rounds, <laughs> and then and here's here's the uh, the hard knocks games uh, in Elizabethtown. So uh, they they're doing their uh, Wolf Creek, uh, but they broke it up. So the first weekend is locals, and the uh, the next weekend, so the the March 13th 14th in Elizabethtown or E Town, uh, they got uh, Fridays. Um, Flames of War, 105. Team Yankee, 105. Now, <coughs> Wolf Creek, <coughs> uh, by the it's way. Like the Hard Knocks Linton series. <laughs> it's all throughout Lent. Well, no, it's true. Go <laughs> uh, and get yourself beat up. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, your tanks turn to ash. Uh, um, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the Hard Knocks guys, uh, they, they, uh, they like doing red versus blue. So that's pretty strict there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And so that um, that the 13th, 14th is for the locals. It's sold out. Uh, it's a waiting list right now. And on the 20th, 21st, uh, I believe it is also sold out. Um, that's for people uh, that are going traveling in. Uh, I, I will be there my, uh, myself. Um, I, I, I got in there. Um, you know, you could call call the store if you're interested. Uh, see if you can get on the waiting list or what that's like uh, to get in there. Uh, and then stretching out to April 17th in uh, Gameology in Pasadena, California. Oh, you skipped over Game Table Adventures. Oh, oh sorry. You, good point. Thank you. Uh, Why well, I, I got excited because Pasadena must be warm. Uh, they're doing Late War 105 out there in California. Uh, but back up to March 27th. Uh, Newark, Ohio. They're having a Team Yankee 105. I, I think I think Newark uh, a, a game table. Uh, they they alternate Flames of War, Team Yankee, Flames of War, Team Yankee. Uh, so you know get that. And by the way, great out there because um, they're still open. But I don't know what they are. So these are little placeholders. You got Historic Con. That's uh, July 7th through 11th. Uh, Gen Con, uh, August 5th through the 8th, and announced uh, Nash Con, uh, which is in a different location this year. It's actually in Nashville proper. Uh, it used to be in Franklin. And it's August 20th through the 22nd. Uh, no Flames of War announced. I, I know Gen Con, if it is going on, uh, Able Company here in Indianapolis will be running something. Uh, so these are little placeholders. Cross your fingers that uh, things get better and we can have these uh, these events can go off. Um, but uh, anyway, that's well. So if you want your uh, tournament up here on the schedule, I'll be reading this off every week. Send it to me. Post it. Uh, you know, add it to the um, you know add it to the th- add it to this thread or somewhere or I could see it or email me. Uh, which is uh, admin uh, at battlerankings.com. Battlerankings.com. You gotta say it three times and it sinks in. Battlerankings.com. 
Okay. What's the website again? What it, the website is battlerankings.com. Are you not listening, Ray? <laughs> Did you get that? I, no, I didn't get that. What was that again? Uh, uh, <laughs> battle rankings, B A T T L E R A N K I N G S dot C O M. Oh, battlerankings.com. Yeah, battlerankings.com. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, there we go. So, yeah, ad, admin at that or, or uh, Joe Lewis at that uh, battlerankings.com. Uh, send me an email. I'll get it on there. Uh, We'll, we'll get this out there and get this, and I'll put it first so that people who don't want to hear me rambling on uh, will get it first and they can uh, move on with their lives. But anyway, we're going to go here. Uh, now we announce that. Uh, so I broke this up. So I, I say Patrick's already there. He's uh, he's ready to uh, take notes. Got to improve my game. Uh, I hope this helps. Uh, the I call this section the prelude to war. This is your planning phase. Uh, this is even, you know, you're, you want to go to the tournament. You got everything. This is stuff that you should have ready before you even th think about going anywhere. Um, first thing is lessons the front. Uh, do you know what lessons the front is? Lessons from the front? From the front. Yes. Yes. We need proper proposition there. Anyway, go ahead. Oh, what did I say? Of the front. Of the front. From lessons the front. of the front. No, lessons from the front. Yes. From the front? Yeah. Anyway, uh, that is the uh, addendum or the errata to the rules. Really? Yes. Okay. And it's published. Um, now, good luck trying to find it on uh, Battlefront site. But that's why I have it linked, uh, and I'll show you where it's linked here in a second, uh, on the battle rankings. So you can go to battle rankings, go to our community section, and I have a link straight to it uh, that, that I, you know, you don't have to worry about hunting on their site for it. I have it. I did, I did all the work for you. All you have to go is to the site and enjoy. Uh, but, yes, read Lessons to the Front. Now, here's the good news, Okay. Uh, it is updated um, at least once a year, maybe twice, uh, sometimes twice. Matter of fact, we should be getting an update pretty quick. Yeah, because it's really annoying. I think it happens usually right before Wolf Creek. You'll get a, an update. Uh, but the beautiful thing about once you read it, uh, when they update Lessons of Front, they put a little bar next to a new section. So all you have to do is scan, look for the uh, little bar that's next to the paragraph that's new. And all you got to do is find those and read the new ones and you're up to date. Piece of cake. It was uh, very, at least that was very nice of them. You don't have to hunt for anything new. Okay. So what is lessons from the front? What is it? it it's an errata. It's just an errata. Okay. So you know all the mistakes, that, all the things that they're fixing. They're fixing or clarifying. Or clarifying. Yeah. For example, uh, I'll give you one. It's a good clarification. Uh, Stormtroopering for Germans allows you to do two, um, two, um, um, what's the, how they, how they rate it. Stormtrooper, you may attempt a second different movement order after the first one, after the first motor, uh, movement order succeeded. Okay. So what people were doing is they were blitzing and then digging in. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, they said uh, they uh, uh, moved that. They that they don't allow that where you would jump up and then dig in. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's not allowed. That's in the lessons of front, and I, I think they might have clarified something there. So those those are little things in there. Also, how command cards are worked. Uh, if they missed a, a some, if there was an error on, on the card, they'll tell you about it. Yeah, those things. Uh, very important. Uh, matter of fact, this is one of those things, if you want to print it out and have it next to, say, the commode, <laughs> and, it's, and you, you want some light reading, <laughs> this is a good thing to have. Anyway, there it is. Um, read it. Understand it. Uh, it will make your life easier. Uh, and it explains everything. And that way you're not surprised about something. Oh, when, when did that happen? Uh, but it's there. Okay, so when you say prelude to war, do you mean before you set down to play? Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, that's pretty good. Thank you. You like it? Good choice of words. Good choice. Of words. Did, it, you didn't think I could? What what what's that like? Uh, twelfth grade level, twelfth <laughs> grade level word. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Anyway, so I can use the SARS. <laughs> All right. So next, um, more missions. Yes. Uh, pretty much every term it uses the more missions. Now the thing is, is that in your in your rule book. Um, in your rule book in the back, uh, it, it has the mission section in it. Uh, the, the thing about it is it is not as concise. Oh, hold on. It's, it, well, it is concise. It's very basic. Um, but it does have the, uh, the chart in it that you roll. Uh, but it doesn't have all the details uh, for you for the mission. Uh, the more missions pack, uh, which has the same missions, but more detail uh, step by step is uh, listed there. Highly recommend it. Print it out, uh, read it over, and then when you uh, when you go to the tournament, bring the packet with you. Uh, some people what they do is they also uh, they laminate it so that they have it available. Uh, I highly recommend it because one of the things you should do. Uh, oh, uh, with the more missions, uh, the uh, uh, the battle plans. Um, with that, you should understand how battle plans work. Now, I, I don't know. Maybe it's, I'm just silly here. I, a lot of people get, for some reason, get really hung up on Axis and Ally. Uh, just re player one, player two. I don't. It doesn't matter because the matrix is the same either way. So when you pick your battle plan, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and then you roll a die, that's your mission. So here's the thing. When you're putting your list together, and we'll get to this, think about what battle plans you want to run, okay? So if you have a force and you say, you know, I always want to attack. Well, the thing is, then you take a look and see, if, I play, if you play the attacker, what are the possible missions that come up so that you can be ready for them? And then you can read them over. Um, there are some combinations that don't come up, um, or or there's a less of a chance of playing. Uh, there, there's a couple missions I haven't played just because of the way that I pick my battle plans. So anyway, you understand how this chart works. Uh, you have a better understanding about how you want to pick um, your your when you build your army. You knowing that you want to be towards a certain battle plan, right? Do you want to be defensive? Do you want to be uh, attack? Do you want to be, you know, e you can go either way. Um, the, uh, um, uh, oh, yeah, Nathan here is uh, saying it, uh, taking twice as many notes, new player here. Yeah, uh, well, the good thing is, is that this is recorded for prosperity, um, so you can always play it uh, at your leisure. But the thing is, if you understand this this matrix and how when you pick something and the chances of something coming up, you know that um, that the possibility of, of a certain mission coming up, and then you can kind of you know gear towards that way. Um, I there there are some tournaments who know that people could do that. So what they do is in the three in the three rounds. You have to use, um, you can't use um, a battle plan more than once, or sorry, twice. Actually, more than once is the interesting one. You have to play all three. Uh, but uh, if if you're, uh, most of them, you only, have, you know, you only can play one twice. So, you know, like maneuver, maneuver, attack, or maneuver, attack, maneuver, or something like that. Um, and you get, you get your games in that way. That, that way, people are not, uh, um, you know, specializing. But the thing is, is that you shouldn't understand how this table works. So with that, uh, here here's an example of from um, more missions. Uh, here's the breakthrough. Um, the, uh, uh, you know, I, I uh, so uh, will you discuss force selection in relation to the battle plans? Uh, yeah, I'll go over that a little. Um, I'll fit that in here somewhere. Uh, which remind me that um, to talk about what uh, Chris just 
posted there. Okay. All right. Uh, so Anna will nudge me. The um, so here's the battle. This this breakthrough. Uh, you see this one a lot, especially if you pick maneuver. Um, and so you see the the table set up, uh, the special rules um, set up deployment. Uh, it it basically if you follow this step by step, you can't go wrong. Uh, and then who goes first, and then um, and then winning the game. Uh, this is one of those things that's kind of important. Sometimes, um, you know, it you have to wait until turn six for the objectives to go hot. Uh, sometimes they go hot uh, as the start of the game. Sometimes the the attacker's objectives go hot immediately, and the defender has to has to wait until turn six to start checking. Uh, their uh, winning con- uh, winning chances or winning conditions. Um, and, of course, in here, uh, it says, oh, I, I'm, oh, it says, I'm sure Ghost Panzer knows plenty about battle plans. I know how they can go wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. What was it? Uh, yeah. Oh, go to Russia. See Moscow. <laughs> oh, yeah. How lovely. Anyway. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> um, I don't tell you how many of them there are. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Too many. Too many. Too many. <laughs> uh, so, mm, that's good. Um, you know, also in here, because, uh, oh, by the way, when, when you print this out, if you print front and back, the way the book lines up, the information for break rules, special rules, ends up on the back page of the breakthrough. So uh, print, um, um, what's it when you print on both sides of the page? Um, and when you print on both sides of the page, it's... Um, uh, it's on both sides of the page. I don't know. It, it has a printer name, but a technical name for it. Um, anyway, duplexing. Duplexing. Yeah, print and duplexing. Um and then when you print it and laminate it, you have both things, you know, you have the, the stuff on both sides. But the thing is, is that all the special rules are written there. So it's in one spot. Also, the victory conditions is printed there, too, for everything. Uh, highly recommend print that out, have a copy. Um, it, it will make your life easier. And I'm actually going to I'll come back to this in, this, in, a, in the next uh, section. List building. Okay, here we go. Once you understand uh, the, uh, you have a good general idea of the rules. You've seen lessons up front. Uh, you have the more missions. Uh, you know, you have a good idea what's going on there. Now you can get the list building, and with list building, um, you put the army together that you want to play. Okay, and um, so. You got to take a look at it, and and so the question was, how do I build my army, and to the to the missions? Uh, that's what Chris there was looking at. For example, if you some simple, real simple rules. If you have a tank for uh, formation, uh, that is your core. Do not pick defend. Defend is the only way you can be put into deep reserves. And deep reserves means that you can only have one um, armored um, platoon on the table or a plane uh, on on the table to start when you're in reserves. And speaking of armor, here comes Sherman. Okay. (laughs) And don't... Silly. Don't stick your butt in the camera. Yeah. You know, moving the camera. So Sherman comes to say hi. It wouldn't be... Battle rankings live without Sherman saying hi. <laughs> uh, so anyway, you say you're a Sherman company, and Sherman's keeping us company. <laughs> um, yeah, don't pick deep reserve. Uh, uh, don't get yourself into deep reserves. The only way you could do that is pick defend, um, and that puts you in a really bad spot, um, especially like if you get um, bridgehead. Uh, you pick defend your bridgehead, your deep reserves. You, the defender, has to wait until turn six to try to try to win for the winning conditions. 
but the attacker can win immediately. Their their objectives go hot. So um, one tank company and and one uh, um, you know and maybe one infantry unit out there and some and yeah, you're just gonna get mulled over by a hundred percent of their force. Um, I think I made some sub notes on list building. Let's see what they are real quick. Oh yeah, develop a game plan. So this is kind of what their uh, Chris was asking about. So what that game plan is, you're like, okay, I um, I want the cat knocked over the speaker. That's why it's humming. Oh, is that what's Yeah, the other one, uh, the one by the cat's tail. Oh, I see it. Yeah. So the um, little cat destruction. So um, say you want. Say you're doing an infantry company with guns, you probably want to do more defend. But the the thing is about it, uh, the your uh, your opponent has a lot to say what your mission is also. So the fact that if I see someone who has a lot of infantry and they probably want to defend, I'll probably pick mobile instead of attack as the as the other player. So that's a possibility. Um, though some people play infantry as an attack, but that's your game plan. You know, you're going to plan for that. Uh, example, uh, Germans with the pack front. Uh, so German players, what they do is they do the pack front, pick attack, uh, place down the objective so that they can place their, um, uh, 88s and overwatch positions and send the infantry forward with the uh, with the 88s and Overwatch. So if some armor wants to pop out and challenge the infantry, uh, you basically pop the uh, uh, pop the armor with all the 88s. Well, I mean that that that's the plan, right? That's the plan you put together. Uh, or if you want to do a pack front, same same German list, but you go, yeah, I really want to defend with it. Um, then you know you have your Plan to have your infantry in a, in a position uh, to defend the objective and have 88s spread out enough so they're not under one template, but they're within eight inches of the infantry. So in case they get uh, rushed by uh, armor, uh, you could shoot um, in defensive fire. Th those are those are things that you need. You want to develop your game plan. Um, you know, it's best to have be flexible. Saying. You know, I, um, if this is if I see this army type, I want to be mobile. If I see this army type, I want to attack or defend. You, you will pick that, and then then looking at the missions, going, um, this is you know this is how I want to play it, because my next thing is uh, plan for reserves. So I'm kind of talking about that already. So when you put your army together, you there's a good chance you're going to be in reserves. Um, I try to plan to win or at least not lose using 60% of my army. Um, so when I put it to, when, I, when I put my list together, I go, can I, I think I could win with the 60% or, or not lose right until the other 40% come on. Uh, those are things. If you plan for that, uh, like, because sometimes you're like, oh, hey, um, I'm going to have, you know, some pack 40s or or my eight, uh, sorry, six pounders um, to help me with the anti-tank. And then all of a sudden you're looking, but you didn't plan your reserves right. And you're throwing the stuff that you plan to defend with in your reserves. Well, then it's not really useful, is it? So these are things that you should think about when you're building your list. Um, if I'm in a reserve situation and I'm doing dust up or encounter, uh, and the other player is this formation, this is what I want on the table. If there are another type of formation, this is what I, you know, I, maybe I tweak that a little bit and put this on the, uh, on the table. So, you know, it's what you want to do is you want to go, all right, these, these are the pieces I'm talking very generically here because, you know, there's a lot of different lists out there that you can put together. But you're know, like, you know, hey, I, I want my artillery out there. I want my infantry out there. And I want some anti-tank. All right. Well, then probably what you're doing is that you're you're going to sit there and, and just maneuver yourself 
so that when your reserves come on, you can support them to go for the victory. Um, or sometimes you can, you know, hey, I want to put this out there and go try to go for the victory before the other guy's reserves come on. It's all about developing your game plan, how you want to put it together, and then trying to do it with the 60%. Because um, if you're a more aggressive player and you're you're doing attack and, and maneuver, there's a good chance that you'll probably end up in a uh, fair fight uh, with reserves, dust up or encounter. Um, if you could get really good with those um, and try to and try to win by turn three, turn four, um, you you have a really good game plan. So it's the idea of winning with the sixty percent, not trying to win with all hundred, because uh, very rarely are you going to have you know all hundred on uh, against against the other guy at sixty because. Um, a really a good player will try to minimize you, especially like you're thinking. Uh, I mentioned this before. If you do an all like uh, Tiger Company, I definitely if I'm an infantry company and I want um, to be uh, in a defense position, I'm going to pick attack because I know you're going to pick attack, and hopefully I get you into a fair fight. Uh, or even better is I get you in a mobile and you're the one defending because. It, it, you know, um, that's why I say don't do tiger companies uh, to use tigers as support. Um, okay, I think I have one more for list building. Uh, oh, yep. <laughs> Include solution. Uh, solutions should be solutions to problems. So, like, what is, what am I going to do for anti-tank? What am I going to do for anti-infantry? What am I going to do for anti um uh, artillery. Am I going to counter battery? Or am I going to have a plane? Uh, how am I planning to take out, um, you know, uh, the other guy's um, ability to rage warfare, right? And so what's your, what pieces do you have to answer for that? Every, everything that you put on the table should have a role and also figuring out that you only can put 60% on it. So, do I have all my answers on the table starting off? Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, Scott, when I say fair fight, I mean meeting engagement. Uh, that, that's, uh, that's a hangover from version three when they said fair fights. Yes, meeting engagements. Anytime a meeting engagement. If you hear me say fair fight, I mean meeting engagement. Thanks. Translation. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's a holdover. Because when I play, are the fights really that fair? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, okay. It's never fair. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll get we'll get back to reality here. Okay. So, uh, do you uh, do you choose units with multiple roles or specialists? Uh, the ants. Okay. So Chris's question. We'll pop it up here. Uh, yeah, choosing units or special roles for spe um Okay. Multiple roles. I like units that have multiple roles uh, because. If I have it on the table, I, I can I could zig or zag, okay. Um, if, but some units I do need specialists. Um, you know, you kind of segue into my next section here. Recon always have recon and make sure it starts on the table. Or you have an option to start it on the table uh, because there are a couple scenarios and they're all with reserves. Well, all but one with reserves that you need recon. Um, oh, silly cat just shedding all over the place. How can He's you be really static too? How can you be shedding when it's so cold outside? Oh, it's good, good, nice and comfortable in here. <laughs> uh, okay, so <laughs> the uh recon, um, you know, so I played a tournament a couple weeks ago. Um, in my second and third game, no, actually, I take that back. In yeah, my second and third game, my opponents did not have recon, and it bit them in the bottom. Um, yeah, because recons win games. Uh, so I was able to position myself in a very advantageous spot with my recon um, to to actually it, it made the game a little bit easier, uh, especially in the uh, meeting engagements. Because you're able to get another eight inches up 
so uh, I, I lost the die roll typically. Um, this is my last game. We played Encounter, and uh, it cares old place. Uh, and the uh, the we ended up in Encounter. Uh, I lost the die roll for picking this to be the aggressor. So my opponent picked the side. So he picked a side that he thought uh, was the most advantageous. What he failed to realize because he did not bring recon is that that eight inches put me in a different position. And um, what he originally thought was out of uh, um, a, 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 in the middle of the table was a forest and uh, a, a, a section of trees that I, I could hide in. I was able to get up to it and then occupy it and able to have my anti uh, vehicles in there that had overwatched in the center of the table. Um, one of the things is if um, a lot of a lot of tables, if you control the center, you control the table, and that's why um, the uh, um, that's why that game went well for me in that one. Um, the uh, but I love but other than recon, I usually well there's artillery too. Um, some. One like I'll give you an example. Artillery, your like uh, your main guns, uh, like you know ten point fives or something like that. Uh, I, I don't particularly care for those, but I do like uh, your hornices or your priest because now it's a vehicle. It has uh, they typically have a machine gun, uh, and also they could shoot at, at anti tank in, in, in just in case you need it uh, or anti personnel. But so they have the artillery role. Uh, but they also can provide some other type of support, uh, uh, you know, working with something. I, I remember I was out, outnumbered in a game with vehicles, and then my hornices were getting, my poor hornices were getting, uh, were going to get slammed, and uh, uh, was able to um, um, a blitz with them and fire uh, with their nice, nice gun. And, and directly into some T-34s, and then there was three less T-34s uh, after that. So it, it's a bonus, you know. If I had fixed guns, I wouldn't be able to do that uh, in that scenario. So th those are things I like where they have more more uses to them. Uh, and, and especially, the, they're, not, they're not that many more. They're not, the points between them are not that much. So I, I hope that answers that question. But anyway, there it is. Uh, develop a game plan. <clears throat> plan your reserves, <clears throat> you know, so that you win or try you win with the 60 or uh, or not to lose. Mm. Include solutions to problems that's in your list for the 60. <clears throat> I always look at the 40 as a bonus. And... Uh, and then always make sure you have recon in there uh, in your reserves. So next, models. Ah, yes. <clears throat> uh, when you put your models together, um, have them easily identified, uh, identifiable, uh, so that when you look at them and your opponent looks at them, uh, if you have a whole bunch of infantry, uh, mark the basis somehow so that you know uh, who belongs to what platoon? Uh, that makes um, you're be able to track them easier uh, because if you're trying to sort them out, you're just eating time in a tournament. Uh, most tournaments are two and a half hours. You want to get as much play as possible. If you're sitting there trying to figure out who's who or what's what, that's just eating time, and that's not fair to you or your opponent. Um, the... Uh, um, <laughs> um uh, that's pretty funny. Um, Nathan says he he uh, I had players at Masters who forgot the order of play. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, it's housekeeping, move, uh, move, shoot, assault. That that's the order of things. You keep saying that to yourself. Huh? HMSA. 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 Housekeeping, move, shoot, assault. It's uh, the good, uh, and uh, all that again, that might be bad for someone with this last, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, uh, the other thing is in the housekeeping, you, you come up with a word that himsa, 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 
the one thing about the housekeeping is uh, ambush, res um, yeah, ambush, reserve planes. That, that's the other. That's the other order that people because you, know, uh, uh, you check morale first, <coughs> winning conditions, um, and uh, <coughs> then then you it's uh, ambush reserves planes. Okay, so it's Himsa Arp. Well, actually, Himsa Arp. The the. <laughs> the the ARP is part of the H in the housekeeping. Oh. So the housekeeping is ARP. Okay. Anyway. Now, by the way, us doing a comedy routine on this. <laughs> yeah, is uh <clears throat> is probably people are gonna remember that. Harpsma. Harpsma. <laughs> Harpsma. Go on the board. Harpsma. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, remember your harp sma, everyone. <laughs> All right, back to the models. Yeah, just just mark your models. Make it easier for you and your opponent. Uh, in fact, who do I got here? Oh, uh, I, I got I got some oh Russians, uh, some mortars. Uh, one of the things I do, which you won't can't see really here in in this kind of light uh, that won't show up, but I what I do is I make my bases different colors. Um, so like my Russians here, uh, these, uh, the, these, this platoon is the Russian uniform around the little bevel of the base. Um, uh, I, I mark them and another platoon, I use a different color, like the khaki for, or the webbing or, or something like that. So it, it's still, uh, it, it's not out of sorts with the uniform, but, you can looking down on it, you're like, okay, that's that's that Russian green, that's the the khaki green, and you can see it, and your opponent could see it too, and it, it makes it easier for everybody. Um the also oh your models, um, uh, yeah, and, and long as you, you can tell your difference between your models, and it's also nice to have the right model, um, you know, especially with like Panzer threes or something like that, that you have the you know, up armor, have the upper armor on it. Or the other one is, no matter if all your tanks are the same, and if you have all the same Panzer threes down there, you can call them any you want, as long as everyone knows what it is. But always have uh, clear models. Okay. Yeah, basically, clearly identifying your models. That, that really helps. It, it helps you, helps your opponent. And it really help, and it will help to get uh, things moving along. Uh, so that's the prelude to war. So now, now I'm kind of thinking of like Henry V going around it, you know, the night before Agincourt. A, a little touch of Henry in the night, yes. um, and uh, and he goes around and he basically he's helping morale. Uh, but th these are little things that you do do to prep yourself beforehand. Uh, you do this, you, you're putting yourself in a better position. You develop that game plan. You have your models right. Uh, you you understand what the vic how victory conditions are work, and you you're you're ready for it. Uh, now it's time for execution. So, oh yeah, here's that section. So uh, in the BattleRankings.com, uh, in the um, the game sources again uh, resources uh right in the top i have uh all this that's linkable and there's the lessons at the front right there um also below it is the team yankee i have the team yankee which i can't remember now um what their section things called i'm sure someone's going to type it here in a second and um uh, and the more missions uh is also there there's the more missions um so if uh, they change their link, I'm always linked to it. Uh, so this is your one stop stop to get the latest and greatest of that stuff. I also have the experimental missions here also, and uh, and some of the old stuff. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Okay, so uh, on to the day of the battle. Um, the first thing is is well. Other than get there on time, uh, make sure you're there, you know, ahead of time. Uh, have your army organized and ready to deploy. 
uh, a tray or as like some of us like to say, a Fretz box. Uh, Chris Fretz makes uh, uh, these containers. Oh, mine's my car. Um, I, I, I don't leave home without it. Um, and have have them um, on, um, yeah, FM one, uh, 101. Uh, it sounds like a smooth jazz station. No, um, the, uh, um, oh, field manual, I think is, uh, is FM. Okay. So yeah, have your armies organized and ready to deploy so that you have everything, li- uh, listed out there, uh, or, or laid out there easily at your fingertips so that you're, when you're ready to deploy, you're ready to put them on the table and, uh, start playing. Uh, nothing worse than when you're trying to, um, you know, pick out a, uh, pick out a foam or out of your case, uh, units and stuff like that. Um, you know, just be ready to go have that stuff ready at your fingertips. Uh, be a little bit more organized. Um, uh, trays are good. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. That that's true. Uh, Rich, um, he is, uh, he is surprised that players show up at a tournament and don't have printed list. Um, I, I think I've beaten this one down for a, a while uh, in the past things. You know, you, you, you spend a couple hundred dollars and a lot of hours to paint your army. Spend a dollar or two uh, to um, uh, uh, Forces of War so you can have a nice list printed out. Uh, it has everything that you need there. Well, anyway, it's, and I think that's all about just being organized. Um, now, now that you're before before you pick your battle stance, um, discuss terrain. Um, the the terrain discussion is very important because you you take care of it beforehand so that you and your opponent, uh, the guy you're playing against, is so that you're very clear about what's what. Um, the In the movement section of the book, and I pointed this out a bunch of times, um, what page is it? It's towards the end of the movement. No, it's actually the beginning of movement. Do, do, do. Um, page well, 43 of your, your rule book. Um, it's this nice chart right there. Um, it talks about the terrain and and what it is. Now I have a couple things. Um, first of all, I always like to play my railroads flat and my rivers crossable. Um, I know a lot of people like to do the forging part, but the thing is that a, it slows up the game. B, uh, depending on where that river is, it's actually, it makes it, so that one opponent's probably fighting the your you're fighting your opponent and the table at the same time. Uh, I, I don't think that's quite um, I, I don't want to say fair, but especially when you only have two and a half hours to play. Uh, if you had all day to play, you can make a nice river crossing and go for it. Uh, but um, yeah, just you know make make the rivers crossable. Uh, it just slows you down. Um, I know they look really good. People like to put it out there. It's, 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 you know, aesthetically pleasing, but yeah, it, it shouldn't affect the game. It shouldn't be a major effect of the game. Now, scenario battles, that's completely different because you're that, that usually it's a, a river crossing that's being attacked and defended. That that's a totally different story, but in a tournament when you only have two and a half hours to play, um, uh, why, you know, why gum up the works? Um, also, railroads flat. Um, also, I, I try to avoid um, hedge groves, what people call hedge groves, uh, and just play them as tall bushes, um, things like that. Just what tall terrain is. Oh, now because you, if you're the adventurous type and you go out and play other people, you know, go to different towns to play people, uh, always. Um, uh, Make sure you understand line of sight, how people play line of sight. Hey, if I'm on this hill and there's this hedge and this hill over here, uh, hedge rows, sorry. What do what I call it? Hedge grows? I don't know. Whatever. Hedge rows, yeah. Hedge rows. Right. 
Those nasty. I was like looking at you. What's a hedgerow? A hedgerow? Yeah. <laughs> uh, hedgerows. Anyway, <laughs> I, I see people are hanging on, on, on every one of my words. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's 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 trees growing out of rocks. Anyway, um, no, you you know what is uh, Normandy? Yeah, yeah, I know what they are. Yeah, yeah, it's just you know over time. What's in interesting? What makes There's it some be? Of them on the picture there, I think. Uh, no, that's actually Romagan. Uh, that board's a Remagen. All right, never mind. Yeah, that's the bridge and and everything. Uh, hill hills rise to the most problems. Yeah, um, I I go along with Ridge. Uh, Rich, hills do raise the most problems uh, because not everyone can make a nice hill. So Battlefront makes a decent hill, or actually a really nice hill. Uh, it has a it's uh, as uh, like Chris Fretz likes to say undulating you know where you can make your hills undulating so it's a nice round you know uh but some i like that some fun is like hills give rise to the most problems they give rise they'll give no hills give rise yeah <laughs> never mind um it's a fun. yeah he didn't even know it the the uh, i'm actually i'm gonna get there in the, the second chris uh as it just popped up uh, people who buy uh, two-inch insulation and then cut it, uh, they get these really sharp and these really flat. Uh, you better, yeah, best discuss, hey, if I, I'm going to be uh, hauled down, where's hauled down at, right? So everyone knows where that, where that dividing line is. Hull down's here on top of hills here. If I'm behind it, you know, clear all that stuff up. Because if people play, uh, you know, from people, pl different towns have little different ways of playing. Uh, even though it's the same rule book, somehow the interpretations come out a little different or or it's just some, you know, uh, trial, uh, some native way of playing. So, uh, so discuss the terrain. One of the things is, uh, oh, another thing is, after you choose your um, missions and you have the mission, read the mission out loud, step by step. I, I know it seems a little, maybe a little juvenile, but it's really nice if one person op uh, has the uh, their more mission and then reads it step by step. Hey, there's an ambush. Okay, great. Hey, there's minefields. Okay, good. What What happens is if you skip a step, and the the player that like for example there, say there was minefields and somehow you guys skipped that the guy that was supposed to have minefields actually might feel that he got slighted now it might not be the other players are intended attention but guess what it, it, it it's there it happened so if you go through step by step reading it out loud and and you know, one's reading it and the other one's uh, agreeing to it or or they're reading it by, you know, or together. But if you read it out loud, go step by step, everything's covered. You're like, well, you know, we read that, you understood it, and that, that, that's what it is. Uh, and so that, no, there's no hard feelings. Uh, other people might not realize, oh, hey, that, that happens here or that's when it happens. Yeah, I'll read it step by step. Um, there's it goes st special rules like ambush minefields that's their deep reserves or what kind of reserves uh then there's the setup section uh where the objectives go uh who goes you know who puts the objectives out first um you know and then there's the deployment uh oh one of the things about the setup is they'll tell you who has reserves if there's um uh you put pre-plotted uh, bombardment out uh, that that kind of stuff. There's the deployment, how deployment, who goes first, how it gets deployed, um, and then then most important. Uh, well, I don't know most important, but it's all important. Uh, is winning the game. What's the winning conditions? So that way, the you know if like I was talking about, if the condition is uh, the defender has to it could start checking on turn six, but the attacker. Can start turn uh, 
the uh, their objectives go hot immediately. As the defender player, you probably want to know that. Uh, so that's kind of important. Um, I don't want to get off topic here, but there was the one question that you left, you tabled. Uh-huh. Will you discuss sports selection in relation to battle plans? Does that have anything to do with this? Uh, no, I, I did discuss that about. You did. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I missed. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Yeah, I, I slid it in there. At least I yeah. think I covered it. Uh, I don't know how adequately. Yeah, because I'm talking in generals, you know. Yeah. Well, generals. No, I'm talking in generals. Small generals. g. Okay. Yeah, general terms. So, but yeah, uh, but I, I would. I, I I tried to do this uh, step by step. Even with veteran players, making sure that we don't miss anything, uh, and then we hit all we hit all the checkbox. Oh, and Chris said I did, so I, I think he's somewhat. He, I don't. Are you satisfied? Somewhat satisfied? Neutral? Unsatisfied? Or very unsatisfied with the, your selection? Anyway, okay, um, we had Chris's uh, statement: Flames of War it was a game of intense. Oh, you know, you know what? What? Read. Oh. Discuss intent. Okay. Yeah. Discuss intent. Yeah. So now you're playing the game. This is where uh, discuss intent. Uh, the the thing about intent is, if you go, I'm I'm go here. I'm gonna go hold down. And and by the way, I would do the all this in the movement phase. As you're moving that platoon, you say, okay, if I if I put this unit here, and I go hold down, and, and do I get cover from this point on and, you know, have your opponent go, yes, you know, and agree so that you're getting it out of the way in the movement, not movement, and then start your shooting phase and all of a sudden some surprise happens. Uh, that's the worst place to have it because in the movement phase, you can correct it. Uh, he says, oh, you know, uh, oh, if you don't want to be seen by this, move over a half inch, you're good, Okay. Um, that, that stuff can be corrected in the, um, what? Ah. Okay. That stuff could be corrected during the movement phase. Uh, also a tent. Oh, one of the other things about intent is what I, I, I begin to practice of doing is, um, before I'm going to move and I know I want to assault, uh, I will before I even start movement, I will do a total measurement and and go from, you know, where I'm at, say infantry, to what I want to assault. And I would measure it to make sure that I can get there with the 8 plus 4 because, uh, you know, assaulting range is 4. And if I can get to the 12, I, I will show my opponent, uh, by the way, you know, um, here, this guy's within 12. In case he gets, you know, and then I would move it accordingly so that they understood where I started, where he was. He's not uh, not surprised that I'm doing an assault. <clears throat> also, if if it's if my assault is eight and I need to do a a, um, a follow me, I also let them know. I you know, by the way, you're a little bit out. I'm gonna have to do a follow me to make this assault happen. And uh, once again, it's all discussed during the movement phase. Uh, you, you know, I pre-measure it, show my opponent, and then he—they're not surprised by anything. Uh, well, they shouldn't be surprised when I when when I unleash that uh, hell of assault, bringing fire and brimstone down. I don't know. I'm just making it up. But anyway, uh, those—that's th your game of intent. Hey, I'm going to be doing this. I'm moving here. Am I? Am I good? Do all that during the movement phase. Uh, intense. Huh? Why not in houses? <laughs> wow. Did... I know. Pat Patrick would just send something like that. Oh, that if your sick. troops are intense, why aren't they ready for battle? Aren't they ready for... Okay. Um, wow. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, um, Alan said here, because we played at Historicon a bunch of years ago, I like I like what you did at Historicon when I forgot mine, and you ran your eight rads and up and killed my three hornices. Yeah, I, I, I you know, by the way, eight rads are not tanks, but anyway, that's just something I say. But there's your intent. So uh, discuss it. Take care of it during the movement phase, so that there's no discussion during the shooting phase, 
or your opponent's shooting phase back. Okay. All righty. So what else I got here? Oh, know your army. Oh, yes, yes. Know your army. Uh, so um, on the cards, I don't know why I did look, those Luke's. Um, I got other cards here. I got cards all over the place. place in the <laughs> Anyway, know know your know your army. Uh, you know if your infantry moves this, what they're hit on, so that you don't have to re- you don't have to look at the card. You already have it memorized. One of the ways to do that is consistently play the same army or the same units over and over again, and you'll know. Uh, the next, actually, the next thing for that, the master level thing, is actually know the statistics of your opponent's army. Um, that actually makes you a much better player. Uh, because you know what you're running into or what the threat level is on the other side. Um, so as you approach something, if you're, you know you're going to be safe or not safe, uh, debate you know, on the stats of the, uh, of the unit that you're going up against. Uh, but, yeah, know your army. Be- one of the things is because if you're, if you're always looking up uh, the movement or how fast they move or what they're hit on, that just slows the game down. Because um, if – you could do all that. You most likely, you probably can get another turn in. And there's a big difference between uh, getting six turns in or seven. Uh, I don't know how many times people say, boy, if I just had one more turn. Well, these are ways of uh, getting you that extra turn. Uh, because if you think about it, a turn is about, uh, man, with a lot of shooting and assaulting, maybe 15, 20 minutes. Well, if you cut out five minutes Every round of the turn before, you got yourself the next round. You got ne- one more round to play with. Um, so that also helps speed up the game. Uh, know your stats. And, and if you know the, your opponent's stats, that makes you don't have to answer, you know, ask them. Uh, there's that. Uh, next, when I was talking about when you're making a battle, uh, you know, a game plan, uh, play your game. If you could, if you could play your game the way you planned it, you've probably got, you're probably going to do well because that's the way you planned. If you start playing the other guy's game, uh, and and he's starting to dictate the terms of the battle, it, it's probably not good for you because you're playing his game. Um, so try to get, try to get your. You're dictating the rules of engagement, uh, how many units are there, what's engaging, uh, when you want to engage, uh, when the bat, you know, forcing when the battle happens. Uh, play your game. <clears throat> uh, if the other guy's playing his, try to throw him off and start playing yours. Uh, so that's all about how you envision your units working cohesionally, you know, as a cohesion, uh, and and you know, um, executing you made the plan now execute uh um this is another important one know when to be aggressive um so at some point you gotta you gotta start pressing uh especially like in a in a um a meeting engagement um you need um you need to know when to be aggressive um, cause there's sometimes when you're aggressive and you get, you know, you know, you push your infantry out there and all of a sudden they're, you know, they just get shoot shot up. Uh, but when, what's the trigger point to be aggressive? Well, that bases on your army. Um, if you keep playing it, you should start getting a feel about when you can start pushing, um, start getting a little bit more, um, the Na- Napoleon ha- actually had a, a term for it. Um, I, it, it translates the the quick of the eye. Um, what that means is that you can look at the battlefield and know when to make the change. What's the you see the trigger for to make a change to be aggressive, defensive. You 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 have that good you know tactile feel for the for the battle. Uh, that's I I don't know if that one could be taught. Or, or you can, yeah, actually, I think it could be taught. Learn how to, look, when you see it on the field, when to be there. Because uh, I'm going to say there, there's a skill that everyone should learn. 
and that is when to engage how to engage tanks um even if you're defensive uh, being in a defensive posture uh because one of the things the worst thing that happen is you shoot shoot up penetrate and just bail a bunch of tanks and they're just getting right back in the trick is is actually have infantry there ready to assault uh because bailed out tanks surrender so if you can get you could learn that combining with putting a whole bunch of shots at tanks getting them to um yeah getting them to um the worst case scenario bail, bailed out but you don't care because guess what you're going to do the assault then they're captured that way, basically what you're doing is you're putting the guarantee in the destruction of that tank company. Well, I mean, that's the theory. Uh, they're also, the, the worst thing that can happen is you completely whiff the, the main guns and some of your infantry is out there hanging the breeze. But, you know, uh, that's this way it goes. Uh, but typically, you try to figure out what's the best way, um, you know, how to get the angle on the tank so that you get the less amount of shots uh, at your infantry, you know, you always want it to be like four, four at most, or you know, or less is better. And come at the side of the formation of tanks, um, or better yet, hit the side of a bailed one so that the other tanks can't fire through. I don't know. Sometimes luck happens that way, um, but that's a skill to learn. If you could do that, that, that will change your game big time, bigly. Right. But that that's one of those things, knowing when to be aggressive, even as a defender, when to be aggressive, when to get out, what how to get out of the foxholes, how to hit the uh, incoming unit, because there's nothing worse than just having a bunch of tanks sitting there come lining up and just start shelling. And, you know, there's nothing you could do about it. And they, all they're going to do is just shell. Uh, and try to whittle down your infantry before they go in. Um, yeah, figure out some way of as infantry to minimize that and get rid of tanks, which, you know, anti-tank gun or, or another tank unit coming in, providing uh, cover, uh, providing support is definitely a way to go. But if you can work that. <clears throat> um, so there's that. Knowing when to be aggressive. Uh, part of that is, uh, learn this one, more dice, more better. Um, when when you do, when you're attacking, the more dice you can get into the battle or into that round, especially, um, you know, sometimes you might think it's overkill, but uh, you want to take out a unit, uh, try to get as much fire into the unit as possible to guarantee that victory. Uh, of defeating that platoon. <clears throat> um, so, you know, if you, you're um, one tank company, I'm uh, sorry, one tank platoon versus two tanks platoons, the two should win. So, would you, you know, come in there, put all the fire that you can into it, have the infantry come to the side. Basically, it's more dice, more better. Um, anything that you can fire. Uh, that's like, uh, you know, IS twos versus IS 85s. I like the 80, 85s better because I get two shots of 12 versus one shot of 14 at slow rate of fire. <clears throat> more dice, more better. Um, oh, this one. Uh, I, I just kind of, a, especially for your newer players out there, um, play the game, not the player. Uh, you, there's not too many of them, but there, there's a couple out there that like to play the player, especially if they're new <clears throat> to get them to do things that they probably wouldn't do anyway. And, um, uh, and make, make them make a mistake by giving them friendly advice. Um, I, I've seen people do this. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's kind of low. Um, also, I think sometimes it gives people bad, bad taste in their mouth uh, about the game. Uh, the idea is to encourage players uh, to to build them up, 
um, you know, to have a good time. <clears throat> um, uh, also, no, you shouldn't fire everything. Time is important, so don't waste your... Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Chris has got a good one. Yeah, uh, also, no, when you should fire everything. I uh, shouldn't fire everything. Time's important. Don't waste it. Um, yeah, what Chris is referring to is, especially towards the end of the game, um, if the if objective on the right side of the table is the more important one, uh, it's the one you're probably going to win the game. The left side you know, probably disengage or get away from it. Uh, and so you don't have, waste your time firing this, that, you know, that kind of stuff. Concentrate on the one, um, uh, you know, concentrate on the one that you uh, are probably going to win. Uh, get all the dice roll and everything there. Everything else is just probably going to be a waste of that uh, time towards the end of the game. <clears throat> Alan's kind of paying me a compliment here. Uh, is good at building you up and making you feel comfortable as he beats you. Well, um, well, actually, come on. It, it, we're, we're, we're trying to have fun. Uh, if you're not having fun, even getting your tail kicked, why, why are you there? Especially if you're going to be doing three, two and a half hours. Uh, you might as well have a good time at it. <clears throat> but the thing is, is that uh, I've seen people um, uh, try to play the player, not, not the game. Um, just be on the look for look out for that. Um, you know, know the difference between someone giving you friendly advice and someone trying to, you know, yeah, screw, yeah, basically what my wife uh, said, screw you. And um, I think this is the last thing I have. Um, it's okay to make mistakes, but learn from them. Um, one of the things, uh, you know, you got to look at this, um, you know, between the no nothing veteran, nothing gained, or the fact of just getting out there and, and trying something. Because uh, if you learn something from it, you you it's not a complete waste. Of, it's, not, it's not a waste of time if you learn from something from it. Um, that's like, I, I've actually heard someone say, yeah, at one of their first games, they they tried to assault a machine gun platoon uh, that was not pinned down, uh, and they got decimated. <laughs> well, guess what? Guess what he learned? Uh, he never did that again. Um, so, you know, I, I guess you have to do it once to show, well, boy, you know, that's that's a lot of shots, and that's a lot of, you know, stands going away. But, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, the uh <clears throat> oh yeah uh, chris has another one um you only move off an objective once yes uh i've seen that i i've actually a, a, actually it was at a masters at someone who should have really known better uh it was getting down to the, uh, the nitty gritty and they actually uh stormtroopered or or shot uh, shooting scott shooting scoot off the objective they were sitting there defending the objective they knew that they were going to get incoming fire completely forgot about the objective and you know did a shoot and scoot off the objective so that when the housekeeping came up they checked they're like oh you're not within four i win <clears throat> yeah that's um uh don't do that yeah you only do that once yeah there's a couple of things that you only do once um, some of those scenarios are gone, but, uh, but that's okay. If you do it once, you know, like, oh, okay, Hey, I won't do that again. And you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Um, but yeah. So, uh, let's play. Uh, what did we learn today? Um, the, uh, if you guys want to, uh, put your, um, things that you learned there, uh, uh, and did you learn anything today? Oh my gosh, I learned a lot. So I'm trying to like pick one. Uh, you only uh, move off the objective once. <laughs> that was one of the last things. You get a lot of stuff at the very beginning that I, you know, thought, yeah. Um, harpsma. Harpsma. Yes, you learn. <laughs> you learn harpsma. Harpsma. Yeah, which is housekeeping. Um, What's it? Um, H A R P. Yeah. Um, a we said was. Uh, 
Um, Armament? No, it's a. It's a. Um, well, you're supposed to check. Um, Housekeeping and what's M? M is something else. M. M's moose, the moose shoot assault. Yeah, moose shoot assault. Yeah. Uh, but the ARP is something. Else. Oh, oh, and it was basically. Um, it's it's supposed to be morale. Uh, ambush. Oh, ambush reserves. Um, yeah, ambush reserves planes. That's yeah, it. Am ambush reserves planes. Harpsma housekeeping, Harpsma. which is morale. Uh, ambush reserve planes. Right. Yeah, that's it. Sorry, I was. Going in there, the housekeeping is yeah. yeah. The housekeeping is the uh, so now you know your order. So you check your housekeeping for morale, see if victory conditions. Uh, <coughs> well, uh, well, Eric learned uh, that this is the best part of my week. Wow, you know, um, okay, we'll, we'll just take that as a compliment. Um, and Eric, I, I'd say, uh don't be like the coyote. You've got to learn from your mistakes. Yes, don't be like the coyote. Learn from your mistakes. <laughs> and by, by the way, where does he get? He must. Where does he get the money for the Acme supplies? <laughs> no. You know. Um, anyway, he, he does buy a couple things from Ajax, like birdseed. Ajax birdseed. Okay, exactly. that's true. But most of the stuff is Acme. Yeah, he must have stock in Acme. Yeah. You know, um. When the. What, uh, anyone else learn anything? Yes, what did we learn today? Hey, uh, hey, Ray. Uh, Chris Grau has something. Oh, Chris Grau. Uh, he learned, I learned that Patrick and Nathan will make great admins with their note taking abilities. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, Ray. Yep. Did you learn anything today? <laughs> he learned to be quiet. What? Oh, yeah, I learned about uh, BattleRankings.com. BattleRankings.com, right? And you can go to BattleRankings.com for all your BattleRankings.com needs. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And if I only, if I only had gear there. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you, need, maybe you need the create swag. Uh, yeah, I know. It's something else to take care of. BattleRankings.com swag. Swag, yeah. Tell uh, everybody about BattleRankings.com. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Uh, you know, um, I, I, I learned that, uh, and I'll just flip through here, that uh, we're, we got our tournament schedule coming up. Uh, you know, if you have a tournament, send it in on in. I'll, I'll keep it posted up here. Got my little placeholders in case something happens with Historicon, Gen Con, or Nashcon. Uh, also, um, if you like this, uh, become a member of uh, Battle Rankings here on Facebook. Uh, do you know we're we're getting we're we're like over three hundred, close to four hundred people following. Really? Yeah, I know it adds up pretty quickly. Boy, you know, uh, boy, I like to see that to five hundred. That'd be awesome. I, you know, five hundred people actually follow this. That'd actually be about one sixth of the Flames of War people. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, um. Hopefully, uh, Patrick says, "My hope my notes from tonight will pay off this Saturday. You never know. Um, just make sure you, uh, you know, you do your um, lessons at the front and, and understand your missions. And make sure you got that list building, uh, you know, develop that game plan and uh, plan for reserves. Try to win or not lose with them. Uh, Alan here. NASCON is supposed to be a go in August, and they told me they probably would have an FOE tournament. You know what I'd like to see is more than an FOE tournament. I'd like to see Southern Nationals there. FOW tournament. Yeah, FOE, yeah. Um, sorry, yeah, FOE. Well, I don't know what I'm thinking of. I know POE, power on Ethernet, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the, the and the W are next to each other on the keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> uh... Oh, right. Yes. Chris says, only if your dice listen to the presentation. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, I have them all lined up right here saying, okay, you know, we're, we're going to learn how instead of like uh, some type of avoidance or, or de-escalation, we're going to learn how to avoid ones. <laughs> anyway, you know, can we just roll average? <laughs> 
Poor Joe. Yeah. <laughs> I just want just average. Dice are just like cursed. Yeah, I just want average. I, I you know, well, you know, sometimes it, what I do is I get really radical swings. Will be underperforming, and all of a sudden, next thing is like I got six sixes. I'm like, I, I don't need them right now. Um, I don't know. Eric thinks uh, Southern Nationals is never going to come to Florida again. Well, there's got to be a, a, you know, something down there to bring Nationals down there. Um, yeah, you never know. I mean, uh, I, I'd say hopefully after things settle down with the pandemic and, and stuff starts ramping back up, you know, we'll, we'll see what shakes out of it. Um, <clears throat> all right, everybody, we're going to uh, wrap it up. Uh, you want to play us out? What do you want to go out to president, your president's March, or do you want to go out to Roadrunner again? Well, no, do the Roadrunner thing. Cause that, that was good. That was good. Cause we want people, you know, see if anybody remembers it. Yeah. And remember, it's don't be a wild IE coyote. Super oh. genius. Don't be coyote. You yep. Wanna, Learn from your mistakes. All right. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Let's see if he remembers this silly. If you're on a highway, no one to go see I don't remember it. Crazy clown. No slow down. No. Wow, very fun. No speed kills. There you go. There you go. Hey, everyone! Until next week, <laughs> uh, send those uh, send those uh, tournaments in uh, where you're going to have them. I'll add them to the schedule. Until next week, have a good one. Stay warm. <laughs>